Welcome everybody to our online program on addiction and recovery from the Sunshine Coast Health Center up here in Powell River, BC. And we've been talking about uh, the history of addiction treatment, which is a very tricky, uh, um, uh, a, a tricky history because the history of treatment is based on how the contemporary society and culture looks at the meaning. Uh, what they think the meaning of, of excessive drug and alcohol use is. So if you believe, for example, that it's a sin, which was very common in our society a hundred and, well, even a hundred years ago, then you would treat it as a sin. I mean, it's not, uh, it's no surprise that prohibition in the United States in 1920 uh, was heavily influenced by the Women's Christian Temperance Union and various other groups like that. Although also part of the women's movement, of course. But we mentioned last week that uh, about Towns Hospital and Charles Towns' belief that addiction was not a moral issue, it was a uh, cell pathology. So if you drank enough alcohol then you would poison yourself so it's a biological phenomenon and the and the biology is important because what it does is it moves it from you know the notion of sin and all that into the scientific realm well in the scientific realm of course is psychology and so psychology um a lot of scientists who were psychologists thought that well maybe we could help uh, these poor alcoholics and, and drug addicts using psychology. And in the early days in the United States, the most popular psychology uh, came from Sigmund Freud. We're not sure why he was so popular in the United States. He was wildly more popular in the United States than anywhere, even in his uh, home country. But in the United States, uh, a lot of psychiatrists were trained in um, Freud's uh, uh, psychology, which is known as psychoanalysis. So lots of psychoanalysis uh, uh, was now used with, uh, with alcoholics. <clears throat> Eugene O'Neill, uh, we've talked about him before, he actually went to a, a psychoanalysis uh, to, get, uh, to understand why he drank so much. He didn't last too long, I think three or four months. And Eugene O'Neill, being the great genius that he was, probably picked up on uh, psychoanalysis pretty quick. And it didn't really impress him too much. But uh, a lot of people did. Bill Wilson uh, uh, was well uh, went to a, a therapist for a while, and again, it's all psychoanalysis. But this is important because this is now the scientific approach to treatment. Just like Towns Hospital is the biological, now we have the Freudian psychoanalysis as the uh, psychosocial treatment, and. The basic idea behind a Freudian analysis is that uh, we all have this unconscious, we're driven by these drives which we are probably not even aware of, and and, uh, and then developmentally we go through a series of stages when we're young called these psychosexual stages. And anyway, the psychoanalyst got into the their, uh, uh, got the idea that the uh, alcoholic, for example, is stuck in the oral stage. So in this developmental stage for human beings, stuck in the oral stage. And then uh, things uh, in psychoanalysis, uh, they're very, uh, the different defense mechanisms, one would be repression. So, uh, so an alcoholic would be, somehow would be repressed. There was something, something else going on. So it was a symptom of something much deeper. And so you would enter psychoanalysis to bring these unconscious motivations and things up to, uh, up to consciousness. And that way you could deal with them and then presumably get over alcoholism. And, and uh, psychoanalysis is, is also fundamentally important in the story of the treatment of addiction because there was a, a, a fellow by the name of Harry Tebow who was a uh, longtime friend of uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. And he wrote uh, some articles in the, in the 40s and in the 50s directly uh, to, about alcoholism because he had treated uh, Bill Wilson and some members, uh, early members of the 12-step program. And Tebow was the one who came up with the idea that the, uh, the essential problem of the, uh, of the alcoholic was this defiant uh, narcissism. So they're the center of the universe, right? And he believed the 12-step program would work because if if this person who was so narcissistic and self-centered, if he or she could believe in something greater than himself or herself, right? 
uh, God as we understand it, then this would tame this defiant uh, individuality and therefore help the person make sense of the, himself or herself and the world in this new way. So Harry Thibault was a great fan of Alcoholics Anonymous, but he was this one who, who published this material, a uh, very psychoanalytical uh, interpretation of, of the addiction. And in fact, Hazelden Treatment Center, one of the most famous treatment centers in the world, actually republished all of Thibault's work in 1990. <laughs> Which is kind of interesting, right? Because he wrote it, you know, decades and decades before, but he, he still has that power, at least in some circles of, of the treatment, uh, uh, the treatment world. So anyway, this is another interesting uh, little little piece to the uh, puzzle of uh, uh, in the history of addiction. So we we start out with Towns Hospital and this biological phenomenon, moving along to Harry Thibault and various other psychoanalysts with this more uh, Freudian psychology coming up, which is still very powerful today. Anyway, uh, we'll be back uh, next time with uh, another example of, uh, of treatment, and this time uh, a little more recent.